Hello everyone, welcome to Fosfo G 2021. This is Humahua Castro in, in Sunday morning. Um, finishing the sessions for the morning, we will be having Luis Calisto. Hi, Luis. Hello. Who will be presenting um, geometric referential, a package to convert coordinates, formats, and altitudes. So, is all yours? Will be you change your screen? Yes. Okay. Let me just... Okay. It's share now. Yes. Okay. I will leave you. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Luis Calisto. I'm presenting this uh, package. Uh, which is a JavaScript uh, package that we created some time ago uh, to convert uh, coordinates, formats, and altitudes. Uh, perhaps I, I should start with uh, with um, some uh, introduction and some um, context. Uh, basically, uh, this package was uh, created while I was working at Sterblue, uh, and they were uh, creating, we were creating software for drones to inspect uh, mainly industrial infrastructures. For example, wind turbine, these big wind turbines or cooling towers. Um, yeah, so basically um, we had like a complex uh, software and this software, you, it was mainly JavaScript software but um, we used many different uh, packages, um, 3.js, uh, open layers, Cesium, Proj, and many, many, many others. Uh, and uh, the team, we had the different developers team. Um, and it was quite common that we had to, to deal with spatial coordinates, local 3D environments, for example, modeling a wind turbine or modeling a cooling tower. Um, and then we had different uh, concepts of coordinate transformation, format transformations, and this was a common problem. In order to solve that problem, we, we came up with a first approach and the first idea was, okay, we are using JavaScript, we need to transform um, coordinates uh, between different systems. So let's use Proj for JS, uh, which uh, is a normal, um, sound to me to be the normal uh, approach, but um, not all developers could, could use it because of the, the notions behind it. Um, uh, but, and also when it comes to format transformation, for example, if you have an array of coordinates and you need an object, uh, with coordinates, or if you have cesium cartographic and you need to translate that into a 3JS object. So these type of transformations were not possible. Then we had sometimes uh, sync functions and uh, sync functions. And then lately we had uh, altitude transformations between ellipsoid, geoid, terrain. So, uh, and at some point with all these teams of softwares, uh, of all these teams of developers, we come up, um, we realized that it was not a very good idea because I, 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 I realized that some, at some point I, I had colleagues, developers, that they wanted to do everything by themselves. They didn't, they didn't want to use Proj. They come up with these old formulas by themselves and it was not, it was definitely not a good idea at all and didn't work. So. Then we come up with a with a second approach. Okay, let's let's try to uniform this. So let's come up with three different packages. So if we need to transform between different coordinates, we use Proj. If we want a format transformation, we create um, we create um, another package uh, for format transformations. If we need altitude transformations, we have another package. So we have three packages. But then um, also it was not very good because at some point I had colleagues uh, just like that. Uh, what shall I use? When shall I use this package? And at some point it was also not the perfect solution, although it was much better than the first solution that we came up. 
So um, we decided that no, and let's create one single package to deal with these three problems. So to deal with format transformation, coordinate uh, transformation, and altitude. So one package that could deal with all of these. And we decided to call it geometry referential. Uh, perhaps that's not the best name, but it was what we uh, decided to use. It was quite interesting. And at some point later when we, we, we created it, we real, realized that, yes, let's, let's make it open source and release it to, to, to the community. Um, this package has only two main functions. In fact, it's just one function that does everything. One function which is asynchronous and one function that is asynchronous. You can use the one you prefer. Um, that's a curried function. Uh, and then it can deal with everything. Um, I can just give you some examples in terms of format transformations. Um, all supported formats can be tra uh, transformed between them. It's quite easy to add new formats. Um, you can transform from a string into an array, a string into an object, um, lat, launch, x, y, uh, all that is possible. But then we also deal a lot with 3JS and Cesium. So we decided that also this package had to transform between um, three um, objects and uh, Cesium objects. This is just one example, uh, a very basic one. So here I have, I give as an input uh, an array of coordinates, uh, uh, X, Y, Z, and the output is just uh, uh, an object. Um, as you can see, quite, quite, it is uh, very simple. And this is how it works. So you need to give it as an input a JSON with the specifications of the two from and two uh, specifications. I have from format array XYZ into format object XYZ. Another example here should be um, from a 3JS object into, um, in this case, from a cesium cartographic object into a 3JS uh, object. So I give as an input my variable of my cesium point object and the output will be a 3JS object. Um, then in terms of, um, in terms of, um, in terms of uh, coordinate transformations, obvi obviously uh, we deal with Proj for JS. Uh, we had to do some slightly modifications of the, the Proj for JS um, um, package. We committed that, so you, you, it's, it basically it uses the normal Proj for JS. Um, and, and that's it. So behind the scenes, that's if for coordinate transformations, that's what it uses. In this, in this example, for example, I'm just transforming from EPSG, uh, for, so for WGS84 into the um, uh, Google Mercator. Um, nothing spectacular here. So I'm transforming a string, as you can see here. And the output is giving me uh, uh, an array X, Y, Z, and it does everything in one go. So I just specify what do I have, what, what do I want, and he does the, the rest for me. If you look at the specification that I have here, uh, the system, I have a type uh, we called reference. So <laughs> this is because um, we can deal with, um, referenced uh, coordinate systems, but, um, and that was one of the main reasons why we also had to do, um, to perform, and we had to do uh, this uh, package was because um, we needed to transform um, to local coordinates. When I mention local coordinates, um, it's basically imagine uh, we deal with wind turbines, cooling towers, um, um, transmission grids, etc. And sometimes with 3JS, uh, people they create like a, a, a 3D local environment, and then they do all things inside this 3D local environment, and 
sometimes you need to translate coordinates from this 3D local environment into the world uh, WGS84, for example, or any other coordinate system into the, uh, the world coordinates. So uh, we also needed uh, to do this type of transformation. And that one was perhaps, perhaps one of the most um, complex and the most difficult uh, um, ones. So we uh, implemented this. Um, we deal with local systems. And every time we create an, uh, a local system, obviously, uh, it's, we need to specify the origin of that local system and to a, to a reference system. That's why you see this referenced and local. Uh, it's a bit complicated, uh, but it was necessary uh, and it was super important. Um, this is an example of how to use the, 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 the library to, to, to do a local transformation. It's, everything is documented. So uh, all these examples are used from the, it's documented. The documentation is not perfect, uh, but uh, everything is there. Um, in this specific uh, case, I have a local uh, system. And then as you can see here, I define the origin. What is the origin? And for that origin, what is the reference system? Etc. And uh, uh, an output in this case, I want to transform from a local system, which is specified here, into WGS84, an array XYZ WGS84. Uh, in this particular case, I just give the input 000, I give the origin, and obviously the output will give me the coordinates uh, in WGS84 of the origin. So in this case, it's the same, but obviously, if depending on the coordinates, it will, it will change that. So this was a very important uh, thing for us. And um, it, I think it was more or less uh, um, OK uh, in, in, in the end. Uh, another thing was the altitude conversions. Uh, we needed to have altitude conversions. Um, uh, in this case, because we had to transform between cesium terrain, so we use the cesium ion engine. So you can use you can use that. Please use your your key. Um, we also had the geoid um, and ellipsoid. Uh, we had plans to include uh, SRTM based altitude with an external service. We never finished that. Um, so, but it's it's possible to you add other other things on top of that. Um, uh, the the altitude only works uh, a sync because of the geoid model, which is a bit heavy, and uh, you need you need some time to load it. So that's why it only works with the sync for the moment. Um, this is just one example of altitude where we we transform uh, between. Um, so sorry. Uh, from the ellipsoid to to, to cesium terrain. Um, in this particular case, we have a negative altitude, but that's that's normal. So nothing out of the ordinary here. And yeah, so the goal uh, was to create uh, one package that could deal with all these problems in one single goal, and which you can use. Um, um, for all of the problems that we had in terms of coordinates. So uh, I'm just finalizing here. Um, so basically what I just said, uh, one single solution, uh, one single function to deal um, most of our internal coordinate problems. In the end, um, it was quite efficient. In terms of performance, uh, because we spend time on that, the, it's a current uh, function. Uh, and the fact that it's a current function, you can create uh, the transformation and then you use the transformation uh, for all the, all, all, the, the, all the coordinates that you have. So you just create first the, the transformation that you need, and then you can reuse it a lot during uh, on your code. That was very useful. Um, Simple to use as long as you can define the, the, the settings of your transformation. The problem is that you need to define the coordinate transformation, altitude transformation, and, uh, and the format transformation. So you need to define all the three transformations if that's the case. But then uh, it's very simple to use uh, after you specify that. 
Uh, obviously, you need to understand uh, what you want to do, what what are your needs, and and, and that's that's obvious. Um, um, but uh, but but that's that's how it works. Uh, <laughs> so just to finalize it, um, yeah, this is uh, we make it we made it open source uh, with MIT license. Feel free to use it, create issues. Um, this solved uh, most of our coordinate problems internally, and we use lots of coordinates to 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 deal with uh, drones um, at that time. So basically, it's it's we automatically uh, the software automatically uh, flies the drone into specific points and does out the, the automatic inspection of infrastructures such as wind turbines, cooling towers. Um, power lines, etc. So as you can see, we use lots of coordinates and uh, coordinate transformation uh, was very important, especially the one between the local coordinate systems into the world coordinates. Um, so that's why I have here the 3D engines, game engines. So that's that was one of the problems we had. Um, it still have issues, of course, uh, uh, but I mean, that, that's how it works. That's how software uh, works. Uh, still had some issues, but uh, most of the, at least the most problematic ones uh, were solved. So yeah, these are the links. You can find it at, in GitHub, also on um, NPM. So if you see, I have somewhere one example where I think one, yeah, you can just, yeah, you can just import it like that and it will work as long as you have installed um, NPM install. Uh, this one, it works fine because uh, it's on, ah, sorry, um, because it's on NPM. So that's it. And yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask and thanks. Thank you very much for your talk, Luis. Uh, the tool looks really useful. So we can get with the questions. Ah, okay, we have two. The first one, uh, did you include bounded volume B boss conversions? AG from, I think it would be easier if I copy it to you. Ah, okay. But then, uh, I think, no, uh, I think we are, we don't have it. Uh, bounding volume conversions. No, not that I know. Um, from my from my understanding, no, we don't have. Perhaps that's something we can easily do, um, but no, I don't think so. Okay, thanks. The next question is. How do you weigh cesium terrain height? Will it be possible to do larger scale height conversions? For example, point clouds or other 3D geometries? So basically we use the cesium engine. So you specify uh, the, the, the input coordinate, you specify uh, the height, how do you define it? Um, if it's a geoid or if it's an ellipsoid, normally but it's, it's ellipsoid. Um, and then you ask uh, to return uh, has a cesium uh, terrain, and that uses one package. So if you if you check the, the the GitHub, you'll see that there is one package called altitudes. So that's that's the package that also uses. It calls that package up internally, and it uses the cesium ion uh, engine. Query is that, and then does the the, the math and, and returns the the, the altitude that he get or the difference between the, the altitude that he get and, and returns that. So, um, so I think to do larger scale high conversions, yes, I don't think, I don't think it's, it's problematic. Yeah. As I, as I mentioned before, uh, we were even considering putting more like the SRTM, uh, um, model inside uh, to return also uh, cesium and SRTM and other things. So we used it a lot for point clouds. So we use it for point clouds as well and 3D geometries. So yeah, I think so. If I understand the, the question correctly, the answer is yes. Okay. 
Thank you very much. And there are no more questions. So if it's okay with you, we can finish uh, now. Although mm -hmm. it's early. It's yes. Okay, right? and, yeah, yeah, perfectly. And feel free if you if there is if there are many other questions, please just uh, ask them in the GitHub. Feel free to open issues, do que comments, questions. Feel free to use it. Okay, sure. Okay, thank you very much, Luis, for thank you. for your talk. And we will be seeing you around in Fosfo right? Yes, of course. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. bye, -bye. All right, so that's uh, everything for Humahuaca's morning sessions. Uh, the morning sessions will be ending with the keynote in. Give me a moment. With the keynote at 11 Argentinian time of data colonialism communities by Nisea Wanjiu in Malena Liefman room. And we will be resuming the sessions in the afternoon after lunch with indigenous hackathons, Leveagin Open EO Data and Tools for Climate Action by Diana Mastasi in the same room in Malena Liefman at, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 2 o'clock. Argentinian time. Let me confirm it. No. Uh, the net, sorry. The ending key notes will be at 11 Argentinian game, uh, time and the starting key notes for the afternoon sessions will be at 11 at 1 Argentinian time. And that's it for the morning in, in here in Humahuaca. We will be resuming the sessions uh, in at two o'clock in Argentinian time. So I hope to see you then. See you later. Enjoy phosphogy. <laughs>